Ladies and gentlemen, Trump will get the unsealed search warrant Friday. CNBC. Parts of search warrant affidavit to be unsealed Friday. Judge orders. He's getting exactly what he wants. Merrick Garland and the Justice Department did not want to give him the search warrant, the affidavit, and they wanted to keep everything. They wanted to keep everything hidden. So Justice Department to submit redacted affidavit used in Trump's search warrant. New York Times, the document will be unsealed by noon Friday. Why did they want to keep it hidden? Because it's not about classified data. Hit subscribe to this channel, ladies and gentlemen. Share this segment everywhere. This is huge news. It's not about classified data. They know that a president could declassify at will. He could declassify documents verbally. He doesn't have to go through this elaborate process. Although, you know, there might be an issue with, redact with restricted data pertaining to nuclear armament, for example, where he has to go through the Secretary of Energy. Generally, generally, he doesn't have to really go through this elaborate process. He has the highest security clearance possible. The problem is they don't believe, they can't accept the fact that Trump was an actual president. They can't accept that he was the highest level politician, the, the president of the United States of America. They can't accept that. So what they did was they got a search warrant based on him being in possession illegally and violating statutes that talk about the removal of classified data, not whether the data was classified. So it's also unclear. This is CBS. Trump says it was all declassified. How declassification usually works. That's a great article. CBS News. And one of the paragraphs towards the end of the article is the following. It is also unclear how central legal question the classification process and the president's role in it could be. As the New York Times points out, none of the statutes cited in the warrant rely on whether the records were classified or not. None. That's interesting because the informant, so here we get back to the informant. How on earth would the informant have known he was in violation of 18 U.S. Code 793, 2071, or 1519 and in illegal possession of any documents without rummaging through 15 boxes and an informant wouldn't have the security clearance to rummage through those boxes if indeed they had top secret intelligence. So how did the informant know? Here's how the informant almost certainly knew. Just like the Steele dossier subsource who's on trial in the Durham Pro Special Counsel in October, just like Michael Sussman, the attorney paid by Clinton to uh, create and fabricate uh, allegations that Trump was communicating with a private server, just like all of these very shady individuals, uh, uh, you know, you could look at Joseph Mifsud and Alexander Downer and all these people swirling around the Federal Bureau of Investigation telling them, oh yeah, Trump Trump Associates did this and that. And then when con confronted, Joseph Mifsud lied to the Bureau. Danchenko, the steel subsource, is, is indicted and on trial for five counts pertaining to lying to the Bureau. All of these informants lied to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. But the Federal Bureau of Investigation wants to go after Trump. They don't really care. They just want some pretext. Somebody can go and be an informant and say that Trump had um, uh, romantic relations with a Martian and wanted to sell the Earth to this Martian for a, a hotel on Mars. And then they would investigate Trump and believe it. It's not about this, this unredacted uh, search warrant Sorry, the redacted affidavit used within the search warrant. The search warrant affidavit is going to list not only the legal statutes with, which don't talk about classified, they don't talk about possess, possession, the possession of classified data. They talk about removal. Sorry, removal and illegally possessed in violation. So, Removal and possession of this data, not, not so much that it's classified. He shouldn't have had it, they say. And how did he get it is the, is the question that they're asking. But he's the former president of the United States of America. 
it's not like he's Hillary Clinton and I want a Clinton Trump 2024, but it's not like he's Hillary with private se secret private servers. Could you imagine all of these people like these morally superior, wonderful, highly educated liberal Democrats, they're good people, they love the planet, they love the country, they, they, they're the cold warriors of just generation, selling 20% or allowing 20% of U.S. uranium capacity to go to the Kremlin while President Obama is in office and Hillary uh, raking in hundreds of millions of dollars from all different countries, including the country that is our mortal enemy now. Uh, you know, the Cold War ended, but, you know, Democrats had to relive. They, they, they revived the Cold War because um, the DNC email showed that Bernie Sanders was cheated. So, uh, but here, the issue is not that, that tr the issue is not that Trump is a former president with the right to have a library and he was negotiating with the National Archives. It's not only that he was negotiating with the National Archives and the Department of Justice. It's that the rule of law was ripped to shreds with Clinton. They made an absolute mockery of classified, an absolute mockery of classified data. They had top secret and special access program and classified intelligence from all different agencies on Clinton's servers running outside of the United States government. Nobody knows how she was able to email and obtain top secret intelligence from secure government emails onto her once unencrypted private servers and email. And so the United States government had no access to her servers. She had access to U.S. servers. How is that possible? And then you have the difference, like a digital cybersecurity nightmare with Clinton servers that found creative ways to transfer top secret and special access program intelligence from the United States government. You have that monstrosity, that national security nightmare, the entire planet, according to Comey, and even Michael Hayden, almost certainly infiltrated, all, and they have all of that data. So it's not just like, well, gee, somebody could have taken those boxes. It's, it's the entire planet, every adversarial country, and probably even allies that wanted to know what was on Clinton's servers has that information. Do you honestly think morally superior, highly educated? I mean, what's the point of being highly educated and morally superior if you constantly live in a world of cognitive dis dissonance? What's the point of, of saying how righteous and moral you are when you can't even admit that your side has more corruption? Or at least you can't even admit the corruption on your side. They're making a big deal about the National Archives and Trump in these 15 boxes because they can't get him. He was supposed to have, I thought that he undermined democracy and he uh, tried to overthrow, uh, if you could believe this, the United States government. I thought that he did that. I mean, they, can't find, they couldn't get him on that. That was a complete failure. Then before that, it was, uh, well, the Mueller probe. Then it was, uh, of course, they found nothing with the Mueller probe. He wasn't indicted on conspiring or colluding with another country. Then there's the New York probe, his tax returns, Georgia pressuring officials. And then uh, they, got, they haven't indicted him yet, yet they've investigated forever. You could indict Hunter or Hillary in two seconds, but they didn't want to. And so the thing is, it's like the rule of law has been ripped to shreds. And then they pontificate and half the country just laughs at them. Because the thing is, it's not about... They've done away with, with God, religion, theology. Their spirituality is based on Stephen Colbert or Stu, uh, Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Live or Jimmy Kimmel or social media algorithms uh, suppressing any uh, dissent or stories like Hunter's emails um, and uh, loyalists within the United States government covering up for Democrats and going after Trump and MSNBC and CNN and the Washington Post and the New York Times. Why is it that you have the same article in the Washington Post as you do in Vanity Fair and Esquire and the same article in Vanity Fair and Esquire as you do in the Time Magazine or BuzzFeed or Mother Jones of the Nation or uh, the New Yorker, the Atlantic? It's the same article. It's the same journalist. It's the same editor. They think the same things and they're always wrong. He wasn't indicted on tax returns. He wasn't indicted on collusion because you've been lying. 
And Trump has been telling the truth. Oh my God, what a horrible concept to finally come to terms with. Democrats were the ones who've been lying for six years. He did this, he did that. No, he didn't. He's telling the truth. You want to talk about lies? Trump lies about crowd size. Joe lies about meeting Hunter's business associates in the West Wing. What do you think's worse? Hunt, Hillary lies about top secret intelligence on servers as Secretary of State without the power to declassify and deleting 30,000 emails. I mean, it's like unbelievable. Everyone sees the double standard. You could be, like, you learn this in high school or middle school. Like, you could see some, some people get away with everything. Some people get caught in the, uh, with, then, then picked on and for, like, nothing. And you see what's going on. They're doing that to Trump, and they're covering up their own side. We all see it. It's right there. Give me your thoughts below. He'll get that. It's not about the classification of that do those documents. They, the search warrant was so broad... They could get anything, any document they wanted to, which leads to other questions, too. Um, was it really about the National Archives? Probably not. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. I'll be back in a couple of hours.